It has indeed paid off, my goodness, thankfully, Andrew from Cheetah Plains managed to find them. So um, remember just a moment ago when we were in here, or maybe about 15 minutes ago, we were looking for birds and we were at the old hyena den, actually just slightly north of that. So we were definitely on them. They must have just been behind us. But they're up and down, they were resting just for a moment. And there are a couple of youngsters here. I haven't seen all the lionesses though. I'm not sure exactly where they are. I'm just trying to figure out where these sub-adults are going to come out so we can have a look at them. I know they're sitting down in the long grass again. But we've got two lionesses to the other side, but it's just we, w we don't have a great view of them yet. Let's see what we can do. I wonder if we go forward and maybe go from this angle, we might get a better view. So we're just going to go through some trees very quickly. All right. some guari branches and then I'm going to turn and then we'll have a look at these lionesses on this side just making sure I don't drive over any other lions here we go that's quite nice isn't that beautiful so I think that's exactly what was going on last night remember I was saying earlier that I think that the pride might be split up slightly and that's why they were calling so much you were looking for each other because it's just these two adults for the moment and then all the cubs so I don't know where the other three lionesses are there might be somewhere around here and we're not far from where we had those warthogs too those warthogs are actually just on the other side of this drainage line and I wonder if that's not what these lionesses have seen because I did also hear some cracking of branches just off to the west of me so I don't know what that is the Definitely is something in the bushes that has caught their attention. So I'm just going to keep scanning just off to the left across the drainage line to see if there's anything moving around. It would be nice if they did find those warthogs because that one sow is awfully relaxed with the cars and I can only imagine that she, perhaps she's getting slightly older now and her senses aren't as acute as what they were. And that would be a tasty meal for the warthogs. It would really just be a snack, though, with all of them. Hello, beautiful girl. Isn't that lovely? Now, Ash's one, you said that these are pretty girls. They are indeed. I do think the Nkuhuma lionesses are quite attractive. They are very pretty. And isn't this just beautiful framing? So remember, takes lots of screenshots and hashtags for our lives. Share them with us. We love to see them, especially at this time of the year. This is my favorite time of the year to photograph lions in the golden grass with all the different colors of leaves in the background. It definitely is a photo photographer's dream. And the sun is just poking through the clouds every now and then. You can see how the light changes. But they're hungry. It doesn't look like they've managed to get anything to eat since we saw them last night, which is a bit sad. I always feel um, feel sorry for the lions at times. You can imagine they put in so much effort. They walked huge distances. There's so much pressure on for them to perform and to catch something. A water, oh, that warthog, you've said that George is only a snack. How's that? <laughs> Swapping everything around. Obviously, I meant to say George. <laughs> you've said that a warthog would be a snack. It would indeed, like I said. It wouldn't be very much at all just get a mouthful, especially if the other three lionesses are around here somewhere. But I don't know what she's looking at. I'm trying to stare into the distance. I can't see anything just yet, but my eyesight is nowhere near as acute as a lion's eyesight. Maybe some antelope lurking in the bushes too. It could really be anything. There was also a giraffe moving around here when I came, just came back around and into the sighting. So I don't know if it, that is what we can hear every now and then, the cracking of the branches as it pushes through the trees. And we have seen the Nkuhumas chase after giraffe before, but not make a successful kill, though. Remember the youngest Nkuhuma, uh, we had a great sighting of them one day around Chele Pan, where we had all sorts of things. It was when I just started working here, and that young lioness went chasing after a big bull giraffe but she wasn't successful of course I think she was a game of cat and mouse really just looking just to triple check to see if those other girls aren't around here I wonder where they are no 
Now, Chitty Chatty, maybe you're wondering if the lions in the Mara eat more often than the ones uh, do here in the sands. In, I, I would actually say yes to that answer, purely just because of the abundance of game that's around at the moment with the, the migration happening. So the massive herds of wildebeest, the big herds of zebra, uh, warthogs and things that are around too. And, and of course the large herds of buffalo that are in that area for for most of the year uh, I think so I think that there's more opportunity and uh, they might not have as much coverage if you think about it in terms of little shrubs is the definitely a woody population of trees around here which does help for hunting but they've got the tall grass to hunt in in Kenya so they can completely conceal themselves and, and lions are specialists at creeping in long grass they actually don't need very much to cover themselves if you look at the pictures from yesterday a whole lot of you did take some really great screenshots and you shared them with all of us from our sighting on the sunset safari and they were just lying in a very short amount of grass and they completely disappeared so it is very easy for them uh, Archie it's tough I mean look at these girls they've been walking all night you sure saw how excited they were when uh, they heard the kudu barking they got up and they were you know just about running in that direction and, and and just at the moment there doesn't seem to be too much game around we see seen lots of zebra tracks everywhere but i haven't seen any zebra but barring the two we had a brief visual of yesterday afternoon so i don't know where they are so until the buffalo come back these lions are going to have a tough time but she's excited by something something has definitely caught her attention and and when hunts happen it's not necessarily something that happens within five minutes it can take hours and hours of preparation now john you've just asked what is she looking at your guess is as good as mine i have absolutely no idea like i said we're not too far away from where we saw the warthogs if you were watching earlier they were just on the other side of the drainage so she could have spotted them quite far off maybe there's a dacre or a steenbok or a group of impala also moving around uh, there could be a number of different things that she has spotted but she's not necessarily making a move just yet she's just observing <laughs> not so eyelids of a lion uh, i think it is it's definitely beautiful it's not just there to make them look gorgeous of course there's a special function for that and you see it with kudu as well and the antelope that like to live in the thicker bush is that have those white markings on their faces and that white underneath the eyes actually helps bounce light straight back in so they can see a little slightly better but look how she constantly shuffling herself i i love the movement that they do tucking her tail underneath her bum searching look at her it's so funny to see her do that come on girl make a move she has to be careful, of course, and that's probably why she's so hesitant to get up and race on over, because they've now been searching for the entire evening, and we know that they were moving during the day yesterday, uh, because they started, they ended up uh, on Bovozok, and then we got, they were found in the afternoon, quite early in the afternoon, on Torchwood. So they've been busy, so they must be hungry. So if she makes a sudden move, she's going and gives away her position. That'll be another potential hunt foiled. And she'll have to keep waiting until later on today because they're bound to have a siesta. They can't just keep going for ages. See there how she's gone down, how she's gone right. Hunger is getting to me. Obviously, whatever she's spotted is perhaps moving closer. But she's going to go off and give it a bash. Let's see where she goes now. She's thinking right behind that car. Look at that. Actually, she looks like she might be using the car as coverage. <laughs> Watch it. Let's see if she's going to sneak out. So that's Andrew's car there. Let's see if she's going to pop out right behind it. And I've had lions do this before. It's actually not uncommon because we've been interacting with these big cats for such a long time in the Greater Kruger National Park. They're very comfortable around our cars. And I've had a lioness from the Southern Prides try and stalk a serval and she used my car as leverage. She didn't catch the serval, thankfully. She just chased it around. Where have you gone? Can't see her just yet. She's definitely there. I've just heard some squirrels also chirping off in the distance. I wonder if there's a ch squirrel that's sitting at the top of a tree and has maybe spotted these lions moving around. It's just like the monkeys. They've also got relatively good eyesight. Hmm. I'm trying to see if I can see her from underneath a car, but I don't know where she is. There she is. She's, she did come right past the car too. Sneaky girl. Right, I think we'll sit with these lions for a little bit long, not for a little bit longer, for as long as we can, of course, and uh, see what they get up to. 
and I'm going to send you back across to Ali to see how her herd of elephants are doing.